This time, I'm going to do a bit of a mashup of many of the previous lessons. So we're going to create one example this time, and we're going to use GLTF animations, the Raycaster, Tween JS, and Spotlight Shadow all in one. We'll create this example here, where there's a model imported. This is a GLTF. Double click on the plane there. The character will walk and then do an action like that. like that and so during the video there'll be several problems to resolve and I'll show you how you can resolve those all right now grab the client code okay okay and it's the lesson from the GLTF animations so we have the model that we converted from the FBX's to the GLTF and we also did the animations and we used blender to convert those and we created these animations and they all smoothly transition between each other if I just click them in random order and so we resolve several problems in that video. Okay, so now let's continue making this a little more interesting. So let's look at the code. First thing I want to do is add a plane for the model to walk on. Okay, so uncomment those lines, scene.add plane. Okay, so we created a plane geometry, gave it a texture, and rotated it on the x-axis minus 90 degrees so it faces upwards. There we go, there's a plane. Next thing to do is to set up the ray caster so that we can double click and make that thing move. So we'll create a scene meshes array. We'll add our plane to the scene meshes array so that will be one of the objects that the ray caster is checking. We go down, create our ray caster. We add our event to the canvas, which is our renderer DOM element. Double click, function on double click. We get the properties of our mouse. We set our ray caster, get the intersects. If the intersects length is greater than zero, Grab that point, and then create a tween, two px, py, pz. Do it for a period of one second, and then start. Down here, I'm changing the model mesh position. So instead of saying, change the position of scene children one, which I did in the previous video, I'll just create a reference called model mesh, which is a three object 3D. And when my main model has loaded, being the Vanguard GLB. And just after I've added it to the scene, I'll just say the model mesh equals GLTF scene like that. So press save. Okay, so double click, and now our model moves around like that. So there we go. Now, top right here, we have animations. What I'll do is when I click the plane like that, we'll start an animation. Go down to the event. Here it is. Set action animations three. That's the goofy running button. Set action animations three. So I'm just hard coding it there just after I've got the point. Okay. Okay, it starts walking to the point. And the animation keeps running. There are several problems there. As we can see, the first one I'll resolve is the walking speed is way too fast for long distances. And if for a short distance, it seems very slow. So depending on the distance that I've clicked, we can adjust the tween speed. That is here, distance. Model mesh position distance to P. So we have a point P and we have the current model mesh position and we're just getting the distance. And since we're using one unit equals one meter in 3JS, we can say whatever that value is returned is in meters. So it could be 1.2 meters or it could be 10 meters. Okay. So instead of saying do that tween over a period of one second, I can say, let's just leave that for a second. I can say do that one second and just multiply it by the distance so right now you can consider that one meter per second times the distance being 10 for example so that'll be 10 meters it would take 10 seconds to walk 10 meters let's just say hypothetically my model there walked at two meters a second so 1000 divided by two walks two meters a second times the distance press save and Okay, and even if it was a long. Now I'm just guessing that that model was walking two meters a second. 
I think this is something that you could fine tune if you wanted to. See, for a short distance, it's much faster. For a long distance, the speed is exactly the same. Well, there's still problems we can see. Next one we could solve is we can make the camera look at that object as it moves. So on update, controls dot target dot set the model mesh position and just Y plus one so it's slightly higher. There we go. So the camera is now following. Now, another problem. I want the object to face the direction that it's walking. The simplest way to do that is to say model mesh dot look at p all right okay so now the object faces to the point that it's running like so but that changes instant so we'd say okay we could just tween that turn but actually it's much more complicated than that so in order to tween that we'd have to calculate the new vector of the look at and then modify the object's rotation matrix until it gets around. For now, I'm just going to show you how I solve this particular problem without using tweens because we don't really have the properties that we can merge between in order to use a tween. I'm going to use a different method where I'm going to use a quaternion and I'm going to use a function called rotate towards. Now I'm going to use the quaternion and not rotation because rotations are subject to gimbal lock and quaternions aren't. So we'll pre-calculate the next look at vector, put that into a rotation matrix variable. The rotation matrix look at P from the model mesh position, model mesh up, which is just pointing upwards on the Y axis. And that's the rotation matrix look at. The target quaternion, which I haven't created yet, set from the rotation matrix. So we've pretty much just done that, but we haven't turned our object yet. So target quaternion, is not the same as the model mesh's current quaternion. So down here in the animate loop, I'm doing a test on that. If it's not the same, if the model mesh quaternion doesn't equal the target quaternion, then model mesh quaternion rotate towards the target quaternion and then just clock delta times 1000, which is the speed, how much it's gonna turn on each animate iteration, okay. Okay, you can see the turn now is happening a little slower. Well, anyway, there you go. We've got a turn now. So the object is now turning and running towards the location. Now, when it gets to the location, it continues to run. We should make it so it stops running. Now, I can just say go back to default like that. But to make it more interesting, I'll call a different function. Let's do the belly dance. Let's run and then do the belly dance. So on complete, set action, animation actions two, which happens to be the one that I called belly dance. These are the buttons on the GUI. Just when you press the belly dance button, it calls set action, animation actions two. Okay, so run to your location and do a belly dance. Run to your location, do a belly dance. Run to your location. Do a belly dance. Now, that was interesting. You probably noticed this from the previous video. When you move the camera too close to the object, it disappears like that. This is a problem you'll see with some models that you import. What's actually happening is the center of the model is down there at the feet or the model's origin so as soon as some part of the feet disappears the camera thinks it doesn't have to render it anymore so to solve that when you load the model we can traverse the scene and if our model is a mesh we can say frustum cold equals false 
Okay, so now I can zoom right into it and right out of it, and it's still always there. That's just one way to solve that problem. What we'll look at now is lighting. We'll convert those lights to spotlights. Okay, so in the first example, I was using point lights. Let's use spotlights. And we'll set their angle and penumbra, and that they cast a shadow. Renderer, shadow map enabled. Plane, receive shadow. And as we traverse the model as we're loading it, we'll say, yep, it's going to cast a shadow as well. Okay, so that looks a little better there. It's much more interesting lighting with two quite sharp shadows on it. If I click the shadows update, and the object will walk in and out of the darkness into the light. Let's make the lights follow the model to do that down here in our on update in our tween. Light one target equals model mesh, light two target equals model mesh. Okay, the lights now follow the object. That looks much better. One final problem to solve. If I double click and then quickly double click again, we get this effect sometimes where it just, just slides. What's happening here is there are several tweens running in the background. A quick fix for that is tween dot removal before we run tween. It doesn't seem to be doing that slide now. Very, very good. And also another one, another problem that I had to solve that affected the example on the website. What I'll do is kick and then I pause. I don't just keep kicking on this one. Kicks and pauses to solve that problem. Because otherwise the, it would just keep kicking. A bit like this one just keeps dancing, just, just keeps looping around. So what I can do is go, after I've set the action, animation actions, I can say, it's setting it what's called an active action down there. So I'll just go active action dot loop equals three dot loop once down there. Let's try that out. Well, it's going to be a long one before we see that cycle finish. I'll just fast forward that video. Okay, so that's finished. And so that's looped once, but it's ended up back into the default pose. I want it to finish on the last frame of that animation. But to do that, before I say three loop once, active action, clamp when finished equals true. Let's refresh that. Let's do that. Now fast forward the dance bit. So we'll see that it will just end on the belly dance. Last frame. There we go. And we can start the animation over again. Now this works better on this example because the kick is much, well, because the kick is a much shorter animation. Kick. Kick. Very, very good. Excellent. There was a lot of little problems to solve on that, but that would be a good exercise. You can try this one out. This model also comes from Mixamo. I've downloaded the model from Mixamo, converted it to a GLB using Blender, and I've downloaded two individual animations, one being the walk and the other being the kick, and just put those together. Well, it's very much the same as this exercise. It's just different actions. Excellent.